Yarny friends, I'm Sarah Satch. Welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. So today is Friday Fun Day and I have a really fun project for us to do today. Now this is my Christmas Lights Coaster. All right, and so here's my, my Santa mug. You can see it fits nicely on there and it will even fit some of the bigger mugs as well. But this doesn't just have to be a coaster. You can use this as Christmas ornaments. You can use them as place setting markers. Just get a piece of paper and write people's names on them when you're having a party. And then everybody gets one and they can take it home. And they also can be made into a bunting. Just string them along lights and they'll look gorgeous with all the blinking lights. Now, I made these all out of acrylic because I'm going to be using them more of a decoration than as a coaster. But you can use any medium weight number four yarn for these. If you're going to be using them as a coaster that um, you're going to put like a hot drink on and you want to protect the surface like the wood, um, you probably want to use a cotton. But these will protect the wood from getting scratched up from a cup just won't protect it because it doesn't absorb moisture. If you put like a soda can or a glass of pop on there that's going to sweat, then you probably want to make them out of cotton. But either way, they're really cute. They measure about four and a half inches wide. And because we have this topper on here, they're about six inches long. So they're a really, really nice size. Perfect for all sorts of different ways to use them. Oh, and don't forget, you can also use them as a gift tag. Wouldn't that be pretty on one of those beautiful gift bags, hanging one of these on there? And then they have an extra gift along with whatever that you made for them or bought for them. <laughs> now you can find this complete pattern on my blog. And as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. All right, let's talk about what we need to make some. So you're going to need some medium weight number four yarn and I'm using acrylic and I decided to use this bright green. I thought it went really well with my purple, my bright yellow and my bright red. Now the red and the purple are sparkle yarns. Can you see the sparkle in that? Okay, and so is the silver that I used on the top, but the yellow one is not. And so you don't have to use a sparkle yarn. It just adds a little extra sparkle, especially if you hang them around some Christmas lights that sparkle. All right, so I'm going to be using this green. This is I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. And then this is a sparkle or metallic gray. And I used that already for the three toppers on these because it does have a little bit of sparkle in there. I don't know if you can see that. And I really like that. But if you don't have a sparkle gray, you can just use a gray if you want to. It gives the appearance of the silver top and it takes just a small amount, not even an ounce of the main color. We'll say an ounce and maybe a quarter of an ounce for the top, just a small amount, okay? Now I chose to use these little holly berries with two leaves and I bought a package of buttons and I bought these at Hobby Lobby and there were six of them in the package. And I really like how they look on these and so I'm adding those to all of mine, okay? So I've got, I'm, going, I'm actually going to make a set of six. So I've got two more after this one to use on those, okay? And then I'm going to use the red ribbon. These I all matched. I put red on red, purple on purple, yellow on yellow. But I don't have a lime green, so I thought I'll use red. It'll match my berries on my holly berry. So you can use any color ribbon. They do have some pretty polka dots and striped ribbon and stuff like that. But I really like to stick with the thin ribbons because we want to keep the top short enough that it can still lay there if you're going to put it on the table and look pretty. But also we want it to be long enough so you can hang it up or maybe use a hanger, the little silver hangers, you know, to hang it on a Christmas tree. All right. So. Then we're going to stitch everything up with an H hook, which is a five millimeter. And then you need a needle for weaving in ends and sewing on your button. And also, if you're not going to um, sew that on, you want to use hot glue or E6000 or a fabric glue 
tacky glue, you can do that because these probably are not going to go through the laundry and they'll be just fine. You can put a little dab of glue on the back and glue that on if you don't want to take the time to sew it. That's totally fine. Okay, and then of course you need it for weaving in ends and then our scissors. So we're going to start with the main color or the color we've chosen to make our Christmas light out of. All right, so we'll start with our slip knot. Going to chain five. We'll join our chain into a circle. And make that stay knot. Now if you want to use another method for making your beginning circle, that's totally fine. We're going to go in, pull up a loop, and chain three. This chain three will count as our first double crochet. And we're going to stitch 11 double crochets so that we have a total of 12 double crochets for row one. Alrighty. I do recommend if you are a loose stitcher like I am that you tighten up your tension or your gauge just a little bit on this so that it um, looks a lot neater. Um, some of them I did, I was a little bit looser on mine and they didn't look as crisp as all. Okay, so here's my chain three. So there's one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need to stitch two more. So we have a total of 12 double crochets. You'll also notice that I stitched over that tail of yarn and that's so we can close up that hole. All right, so we're going to join to the chain three and we'll go ahead and chain three. Whoops, one, two, three. We'll turn this over, gently pull on that string <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and grab my needle. You can do this at the end. I always say that. and But I like to go ahead if, when I'm making a hat or something, a doily or something where I need to close up the circle. I like to go ahead and get it done. One less thing I have to do at the end, I guess. Close it up securely. We don't want a hole in our Christmas lights. All right. And I'll go ahead and clip that. All right, so for row one, we have 12 double crochets. We join to our chain three and chain three. Let's do row two. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet, so we're going to double crochet right in that same stitch. And then we're going to go to the next stitch and stitch two double crochets. And we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And this is going to make a nice flat center for our coaster so it doesn't curl up on us. We don't want that to happen. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm just going to stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And then we'll join back to our chain three. We stitched one double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three and then two in each. So we have 24 double crochets. Now we're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now on this row, we're going to form that little point. Okay, so what we're going to do is our chain three counts as our first double crochet. Then in the next double crochet, we're going to stitch two double crochets. One and two. So now we're going to repeat this four more times. So that's one, and then we'll stitch one, and then two in the next, one and two. So that's two of those. We'll do it two more times. One, and two in the next, one and two two, and then one in the next, and two in the next. There we go. So we should have a total of five. Let's see. Here's one, two, three, four. So we're going to do that one more time, 
and stitch one double crochet in the next and two in the next. All right. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch a triple in the next stitch. So we'll put two wraps on our hook and stitch a triple. Now in the next stitch, we're going to stitch two triples. One and two. Now we're going to stitch a chain one and we're going to go right in the next stitch and stitch two triples. One and two. And then in the next stitch, we're going to stitch just one triple stitch. All right, now before we go any farther, I want us to take a look at that. And what that does is that makes that point there. Okay, so we stitched one triple in the next, two triples in the next, and then we chained one. Two triples in the next, and then one triple in the next. Okay? And now, the rest of the way back up, we're just going to repeat what we did over here. <clears throat> so, we'll stitch two double crochets in the next stitch. One and two. One double crochet in the next. Two double crochets in the next. One double crochet in the next. So we're stitching two and one back up to the top of our ornament. Let's see, one, that one needs to be two and then one. All right, now we'll join to that chain three with a slip stitch. And so we did one and two down, and then in the bottom stitches we did one triple, two triples, chain one, two triples, one triple, and then we one and twoed all the way back up to the top. And that's what gives us that sort of alien face look. <laughs> it is kind of shaped like that, isn't it? <laughs> all right, so we joined with a slip stitch to our chain three, and now we're just going to chain one. And what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in the next three. One, two, three. And then we're going to place two single crochets in the next stitch. One and two. One, two, three, and two single crochets in the next. One, two, three, that ribbon out of the way there. That's a little distracting. All right, and two single crochets in the next. All right, so now this is bringing us down to where we have our triples. And we're going to keep going with that until we get to that chain one space. All right, so now I'm at that chain one space, and what we're gonna do in the chain one space is we're going to stitch a single crochet, a chain one, and a single crochet. And that's going to help that point of our light bulb keep its shape. Okay, and now we're just gonna work back up, stitching one single crochet in the next three, Go oh, and two single crochets in the next. One, two, three, and two in the next. All right. Whoop. 
Oops, there we go. All right, so we're almost up here to the top. Oh, goodness, I've got a tangle. Got the tangle out. <laughs> All right, so let me finish up with my last three single crochets. All right, so now we're going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch. And this is the way that it will look. Now that edge gives it a much more crisper edge. It makes the point more pointy down here so that it does look like the Christmas bulb or Christmas light. But we are going to put the hanger on. And if we put the hanger on, it end up sitting over here or over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch in the next three stitches. Okay, that way we'll start our hanger over here and it'll sit evenly above our point. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clip my yarn and I'm all ready to bring in my silver yarn. All right, so we're going to grab our silver or whatever color we're using for our topper and chain one and we're going to turn. So we'll be working off the back side of our work. So we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches. Snug that down better there. One. And these are where we slip stitch in these first three, so they're a little bit snug. All right, so there's three. Four. Five and six and chain one. Now what I do at this point is I take a look at it and make sure that this is lined up with my point because if it's way over here or way over here it's not going to lay pretty. But that looks nice to me and so I'll keep going. So we stitched one single crochet in six stitches. Chain one and repeat. One single crochet in each of the six. chain one, turn our work, and repeat. One single crochet in our six stitches. Get a little more yarn out here. There we go. All right. Chain one and turn. Now on this row, we're going to make the little loop. So we're going to single crochet in the first three, one, two, three. We're going to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now we're going to come down here and slip stitch in the top of that third stitch. And then we'll go right to the next stitch and stitch one single crochet in the next three. And that's it. And we'll cut our yarn. Now we do have a few ends to weave in here. So we'll take our needle, turn it over to the back, and we'll weave in the green one, weave in the silver one, and weave in this silver one here. Tidy this all up, and then I'll show you how to sew on your button and add your ribbon. And this makes for a really quick stitch up and it'd be really fun to go through some of your solid because I like to go with solids on this one yarns and see what colors that you could make up and have them all ready for when you have a guest or several guests come to your house and you want to send them home with some holiday cheer. <laughs> I almost forgot the one thing we do need to do before we add our button and our ribbon is we need to add the little shine here. And so what I do is I just grab a piece of the silver that we're using for up there and I just make three stitches and I try to go through those stitches and not the holes. And this just gives it a little bit of a 
3D dimension, so it looks like it has a little bit of shine. Be careful not to go through the holes in between the stitches or they'll, you'll just lose your stitches, okay? And we just do it like that. Um, if you want to make your shine bigger, you can. I don't. I just make three little stitches and then I bring this back down here. We want to make sure that we do this over to the side because uh, we want that to be seen even when their cup is on there. But it just gives it just a little extra shine. All right, so I've chosen the holly berry, and I like to put them right there. And the truth is, you can add more buttons than one. You can have, you can add, you know, whatever that you want to. And I like to go through first when I'm working with crochet or, you know, a looser fabric and make a little loop like that. Let's see, this one is going this way. So we're going to go up, then down. There we go. Make sure that's on there secure. There we go. We'll go to the back. Grab my hook and pull that piece to the back. There we go. And we'll just tie a little knot. Keep that button in place. And like I said, if you would prefer to glue it on, you can use hot glue, E6000, you can use tacky glue or fabric glue. Any of those would work. You could even use Elmer's glue, <clears throat> but Elmer's glue takes days to dry. Okay, now I stuck this one up where these I did down. So either way is fine. I like them both ways. All right, so the last thing we need to add is a ribbon, and we just put it through. I do suggest if you're going to put these on a bunting that may, maybe make a gold or silver or black long chain and loop it through those and then it will look like a real string of Christmas lights. All right, so we don't want the, the ribbon to be too long so it's in the way, but we also want it to look like an ornament. All right, so I'm going to cut this at an angle. There we go. And now I have a bright green Christmas ornament. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's going to look great with all of my lights. So here are the four that I've made. And you can see my holly on these is pointing down. And this one is pointing up. And since I'm making a set of six, I think I'm going to do the other three with the holly pointed up. But I haven't decided on the colors just yet. I've got some bright orange and I also have a bright pink. But I'm not sure you know, of the other colors that I'm going to make. I absolutely love these though. They're so pretty. Now I will say, if it's not laying exactly the way you want it to, you can always put it on a blocking board, spritz it a little bit with some water and let it dry. And that will help it crisp up, all right? But I love them, I think they're fun. And I think it's the perfect Friday Fun Day project.